What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sequence. We are here for at bat number two with 2019 All Star David Dahl. This one's against Walker Bueller. And why is this video important to you? Uh, I think just because the you know how good Bueller is. He's one of the best pitchers in the league. He's he's young. He's going to be one of the best for a long time. And it's always a battle when you're facing a guy like this. Um, guy has some electric stuff. 100 spin rate, top of the zone, um, cutter, slider, change, curve. Like he has, he has it all. So he's he's definitely tough at bat. So just be able to 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 get him on a high fastball was a, was a good feeling, and uh, it's actually a cool. So I made an adjustment going into uh, the 2019 season. So in 2018, I had a had a pretty good year, had a good run at the end there, and then I really struggled in the playoffs and. Uh, we wanted to me and my guy uh, Trent Otis. We we worked in the off season about cleaning some stuff up and how to go about that. So a lot of times, I was a guy. My hands were high. I would load, and sometimes I would load too much and activate my shoulders. And so when I'd activate my shoulders, I'd get super. You know, I start flying open, and I would struggle. Um, I would miss some pitches that I should hit. And so we really wanted to clean up some of that. Clean up our. You know, we did a lot of bat path work. Uh, clean up that path on certain pitches. Um, a lot of the times, especially for me, it was like the low and end pitch. I had a, I had a tendency to fly open, but also I'd hit that ball on the ground instead of you know where a lot of lefties you know they love the ball down and in and they drive it. So we did a lot of a lot of work with that. A lot of just getting into our launch position, our launch spot, and working from there and just trying to be quick with the barrel. So we made the adjustment to, in order to do that, my adjustment was we, we experimented kind of moving my hands a little lower and just trying to get, you know, more relaxed. I think mm -hmm. we talked about, you know, Justin Turner, his yeah. hands are pretty, his hands are pretty low, but he's just very relaxed up there. So wanted to see if that could help me, um, you know, get a little quicker and kind of just relax the upper body and let the legs kind of do, do all, do more of the work. And then another thing was we worked on hinging just a little more instead of because sometimes I had a tendency just to stay upright and not like have any kind of tilt or hinge and uh, so that kind of would help me clear up my path on some of the lower pitches that I was getting so going into spring training and, and early in the season it, it was going really well it was working for me and uh, you know this was early in the season so we can I ended up making another adjustment kind of towards the like middle of May, but we can, I can go over it after we, after I face Bueller. Right <laughs> when you're yeah. talking about off season adjustments and you're saying, you know, you're working on your launch position, what, what drills were you doing? What, or, or is it just straight yeah. up stance and posture and hand placement or were there actual drills where you were? Yeah, there were, there was drills. I did a lot of, uh, drills on a off a tee where it was like some constraint drills where I would put uh, the tee with the ball on it here and then next to it like closer to me I would put a tee up and it would allow like I, I ended up having to like it was a constraint so if I ended up like kind of going forward or you know going down like too much or pushing I would end up that that tee would get in the way so in order to hit like that down and in pitch I had to like really turn the barrel behind me get underneath it and and so we did a lot of stuff with the T we did um, a lot of uh, you know some stuff on up against the net um, a lot of like quickness drills where I would just get into my launch setup and he would come over with a ball like next to me and just like sit here and then drop it and I would have to hit it before the ball hits the ground. Wow. And I think on my Insta, I've actually posted a lot of my uh, off season work on like my Instagram and Twitter, I think. So if people are interested, they could see that. And I'm actually, I think today I'm going to hit and we're actually going to make like a cool series of drills that I do and kind of like the progressions that we do and stuff that's just kind of helped me like you know it might not work for everybody this game you know everybody's body's different their thoughts are different but just kind of you know stuff that's helped me uh you know get better and uh yeah those were those were the drills we did it a lot and then you know was able to have pretty instant success kind of that season I I, I started out really hot um, was doing a lot of stuff, but one thing I was doing was striking out a little more than I wanted. But you know, I made the adjustment a little, like in May, that really helped me even more. But we can kind of talk about that one, the next at bat. I, I love hearing that from guys because it's a it's a sentiment that I share. You know, there's not one way to do things, and every yeah. single guy that we've had on here says that. 
and you have to have the ability to make adjustments, find drills that work for you and your body because not everyone's built the same. So I think it's great to have guys like you building resources of these drills. You know, if some guys like, hey, man, I kind of look like David Dahl. I kind of swing yeah. like him. What drills is he doing? You're putting it out there. And I think that really, I mean, I would have loved that when I was a kid to have some, some, a, a big league all-star show me what drills he was doing. I would have just practiced them all day. So I think what you're doing is great work, man. There's actually a cool drill I did before I faced Bueller that I did in the off season that I, I do a lot now when I face kind of guys similar to Walker where they're throwing, you know, a lot of guys now are throwing that top of the zone, 100 mile an hour fastball or high 90s with plus spin, plus extension, you know, all this stuff. And so a drill that I do is I take, a, it's, it, it's two T's, but it's a high T drill where I'll have like the T set here you know, at the top of the zone or whatever. And then I put another tee behind it, but a little lower. And when I swing, I'm, my thoughts are like down to the ball, get on top of it, especially with this kind of pitcher. That's what I feel like I need to do. And so I, you know, I take those drills, I, I do those swings. And uh, it, if you drop the barrel, you hit that tee behind it. And mm -hmm. so it definitely reinforces like, you know, staying above the ball, staying on top of it. And, and it, it really helped me. And then I would also face like the velo spin rate machine before I face guys like this and just try to be quick and, and um, stay on top of it. So it, it helps me when I face, face guys like this for sure. Sure. All right. Yeah. Let's get into the at bat. I mean, look, everybody knows who Walker Bueller is. One of the best pitchers in the game. I'm from LA. So all my friends talk about the Dodgers and, We've been saying it for a while. Like he's, it's kind of a changing of the guard in LA. Like this is their ace. Yeah. You know, Clayton's a stud still, and they have a lot of good pitchers there. But this is this is the guy, and there he is. It's this crazy. Not too. you. He, it's crazy too. He throws that hard because he's not like he's not the biggest guy in the world. You know, he's 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 tall and kind of lanky, but the dude's throwing easy ninety eight. Like it's. You don't see that too often. Like it's it's pretty impressive what he does. So, oh, yeah. yeah, I think so. My first at bat against him, he, he threw a curveball, and I I think I got a single on it. So I was really kind of I had a feeling he was going to challenge me with the heaters, especially when I got to two strikes. He does that a lot. Um, but right. here we first pitch here looks like he's giving a heater away. That's a good take. Good take. Good I take usually right there. That's, that's a surprising take for me. I'm up there hacking, man. I, I swing. <laughs> one thing I need to get better at is, is uh, you know, not not swinging at everything. That's one thing I'm working on. And that's one of those pitches with a guy with that plus spin like that, you know, the efficient spin rate. That ball's down, and a lot of times you think it's down and just stays right there, and they can they can call yeah. strikes on that pitch. But that was yeah, a good yeah. take. I was they didn't call it a strike because it was it was pretty close. We're seeing the shift right here. Yeah. Do you ever think about that? No, the shift doesn't bother me too much because I feel like I do a pretty good job going the other way. So, um, you know, I typically don't get too too bothered by it. I don't really even notice it half the time. How many bunts against that shift do you do you have? I don't think I've bunt. I don't know. Every time I try to bunt, I end up fouling off and I strike <laughs> off. So. You know, uh, it's the worst feeling ever, man. Tell me all the time in like double A in the minor leagues, like, hey, you need to, you know, you need a bunt, you need a bunt, you need a bunt, and then it got to the. I started hitting a lot of homers in double A in 2016 before I got called up, and and they, you know, they kept saying it, and then finally they called me, and it was like, nah, we're not going to bother you anymore about that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a divide on that, you know. I think a lot of people are like they see this, they but see I felt like so actually a funny story here in 16 I did we we're playing the Nationals and I think Nolan was on first base it's a pretty close game and um, I tried to bunt I fouled it off and then I hit a double and I remember coming in and Nick Hundley was on on our team and he goes hey don't ever try to bunt again you just hit double <laughs> double and homer so I was like all right <laughs> I, I, I tell people there are, there are times where bunting is okay for a power hitter if you're in like a slump. Oh yeah, I would do it if I'm like not seeing anything. I mean, I have I've, I I probably have one or two bunt hits, but not okay. not, not too many. It's something you actually, if you want to bunt though, you got to work on it. It's not easy to to drop bunts down. <laughs> it's not. People think it's easy. Not easy, dude. It's not easy. So okay, we're not caring about the shift right now. You're one zero. We love one zero. Here we go. 
It's a pitch I can't miss. It's a challenge pitch right there. Yeah, that's like I'm coming right at you, 95 with spin, and I felt like I was a little – obviously, I'm a little late there, a little loopy, so – and I'm right. I'm choking up. I'm like, all right. I'm gonna. I'm choked up. I gotta, gotta get the head out here. I, I don't know what he throws actually. This next pitch, I forget. Yeah, we got one one. That was kind of like a little two seam, or at yeah, least it ran yeah. like that. There, yeah. So now you know. Again, one one. Prime count here. Tough count. Yeah, you gotta. You want to win this count, but I don't think I do. Oh. Oh, the nasty slider. Yeah, that's. I want to go back to that pitch right there. That was nasty. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to get the head out. I'm like, I'm not missing this heater. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> really, we talk about tunneling on this show. He tunneled that last pitch, yeah. and one went the other, one way, and the other one went the other oh, way. So that's yeah. that's that was nasty. Yeah, not easy. So one I, two. This might be the pitch. I'm I'm choked up. I'm like, get my foot down, get the head out. I'm still like on the heater. I I'm still on it, and this is this is the pitch. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I want to go back and just get your mentality here. So, one, two, he just threw you the slider. I'm I'm just still, I'm like, all right, he's. I feel like he's going to try to beat me with his best pitch, his fastball up. Like, that's, I I have a good idea that he's going there. I've had some at-bats off, you know, I've faced him in the past. I'm, I know what he's done to me. So, uh, I really just had a, had a good idea. And I know the Dodgers like throwing up there. So, I just, I had a feeling he was going back up there. So, I was like... I can't miss it. Can't miss this can't bit. Miss it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, here we go. It's one, two. Beautiful sunset. <clears throat> just have to sit on that pitch up, but you said you're on it. Yeah, I just, I, I've hit it before, so I felt like I could get it. Oh my god! <laughs> you won't see it for long. I mean, you got to it. Yeah. You let him know a little bit right there. Had to. Had Is that to. what we're doing right now? <laughs> I mean, win two against a, a guy like Walker and be able to be able to do that. I was I was pretty happy. It was, I, I remember this bat, the bat really well. So I mean, he was standing there like, did he really just get to yeah. that pitch? And the catcher too was like, wait, because like, he hit his spot. Like it was a good pitch. I just you know I had a good idea that he was probably going back up, going up there. And now we see a little bit slower trot yeah. than video yeah. one. This was actually. So we they replaced the lights and stuff to like the LED or you know the mm -hmm. lights and this was the first homer we've hit it. It was our like first night game at Coors during the season and they were they were flashing the lights like it was like a strobe light and they were playing our walkout music round in the bases. So oh, I was like, awesome. I might, might take my time and enjoy this a little bit. <laughs> that's so show I love that. Yeah, absolutely. From now on, you're an all star. You got to take your time. All right. <laughs> I love the slow mos here. Let's see. So. We talked about you're a little more hinged this at bat. Yeah. Um, you wanted to get there early, and you're here comes the fastball. You can actually see it. Let's go back just a little bit more. We can actually see kind of the trajectory of this ball in the slow mo, which is really cool. Boom, boom. High fives. Look at this. Yeah, you see how like usually guys when they're throwing fastballs they have has some down angle or stuff but his thing just stays up there like really rides through that zone i want to talk about this because yelly came on we talked about swinging down the ball you were preaching that you were working on swinging down the ball to be able to get to this pitch when you look at this swing path here clearly you're not swinging right down yeah but it's and a that's, thought process it's a thought process it's a feel and it's and that's i don't like telling someone they're you know no one no one's right no one's wrong it's whatever works for you it's whatever you know thoughts that you need to go take the game swing and and have results and yeah i'm i'm thinking i'm literally thinking here it's, you, you, that, you literally can't swing that way though yeah i'm not doing that but that just i felt like that helps me kind of just clean the path up and get a little quicker on guys like this like if i'm facing a sinker baller off speed guy throwing low i'm not I'm not thinking down. I'm thinking more like turn it behind me, get underneath it, and try to try to lift it in the air. Um, so it's just it's who's on the mound. It's it's ev everyone's thoughts and feels are different. So you can't sit here and say there's one way to one way to cut it. I wasn't expecting that. Watch this bat path. They're gonna show it. Show it. you're so clean through it. Look how long you stay through this. Yeah, and then I had the high follow through. 
it's so good. It's it's fun to watch these. It makes me, uh, it's like, all right, I, I can do this. <laughs> I want to touch on that. Well, just one thing real quick uh, before we end this at bat. You said it depends on the pitcher. Mm-hmm. And I firmly believe that you got to have a bunch of different clubs in your bag. You can't mm-hmm. just have one swing. Yeah. And people talk about a swing all the time. Get your a swing off, get your a swing off. What, what is an a swing? You know, so tell me what you mean by, or what we, when, we, when players talk about hitting and having clubs in the bag, what, what do we mean by that? Just uh, there's, more, there's more to it to go out and put up results in the game. Like you people, you know, there's drills and thoughts that I have in the cage where it might not be mechanically the most, the best swing ever, but if it helps you go take that game swing or – um, then I think you can't sit here and like and dog someone for it or trash someone's opinion or their thought about their hitting. Um, there's just there's a lot of ways to there's really a lot of ways to do it. Um, you know, like I said, there's most of the time I am thinking top hand down to the ball because everyone nowadays are throwing a hundred up in the zone, this and that. But you run into guys that are still sinker ballers, off speed pitches. So for me to sit there and try to do this and think that on a ball moving and going down this way, I'm just going to chop it to the ground. So I need to figure out a way to, to get more on plane with it. And the way to do that for me is by thinking, okay, I need to, I need to maybe have a little more tilt on this guy and turn the barrel behind me a little more and kind of get on plane quicker so I can, so I can lift this pitch. Um, yeah, there's just, there's no one way to do it. There's no one right thought. And that's, that's kind of how I think about it. You got, you got a lot of, the new old school versus the new school stuff. And I, I'm kind of in the middle of both of them. I think I had think both ways kind of, you know, just yeah. like it depends who's on the mound. I think that's how most people should feel like yeah. you can't be speaking in absolutes when it comes to hitting because we don't control the variables. Like you may, you may watch, you know, certain hitters, Bonds, Trout, the best, and they look like they're doing something, but you need to dive in a little deeper and think about, you know, what what are they thinking, what are they feeling, what's their work in the cage that's able to translate to that swing in the game. You know, there's there's a lot of different factors into it. All right, man. Well, that's about number two. So, Another good one for the memory bank, bro. Walker Bueller. And I, I think they're all against the Dodgers. I like when you hit, when you hit homers against the Dodgers, you feel really good just because they're I such a good team. And their fans are, you know, their fans are, are wild. They're always, they're always giving you crap. So it's, it's a good feeling when you, when you hit, hit uh, homers off Dodgers. Spoiler alert, we got another one coming up here with the Dodgers. And it's off the Dodgers. <laughs> all right, thanks, Dave.